Hi everyone, Budget Stark here. Thanks again for tuning in. We're going to be checking out these King Arts die cast Iron Patriots from Iron Man 3. I'm going to show you one thing very quickly on the box because a lot of people aren't sure about these hologram stickers. I just want to show you here the King Arts one comes with a hologram sticker as well, just in this portion here. So it's not something that Hot Toys specifically does. I think all Marvel, especially in Asia, comes with hologram stickers. It says HKG, so you know which origin, which territory this particular product has come from. So that's enough about that. Let's check out the figure itself and what it comes with. You get the batteries, two flight stands. One of them is a flight stand. One of, it, one of them is a standard posing stand here. Here's the clamp. You get a set of tweezers for battery installation. This little tool for opening up the compartments. And again, another tool for helping you install the batteries. Just be aware, if you look at the size of these batteries, they are tiny. It is smaller than the size of your fingernails. So any help, any tools that will be handy to put them in is much appreciated. Here is the nameplate and a bunch of relaxed repulsor hands and articulated hands there. You have the forearm gauntlets which are, little, which are a little bit oversized compared to the Hot Toys version. You get also a roadie head sculpt and that's the neck post that helps conceal the gap on the armour. You also get a display base and here is obviously the figure itself. In this video I will be showing you how this looks compared to the Hot Toys version along with how much this weighs. Many collectors wonder if it's die cast it should be pretty heavy. So you will be able to see that when I put it on a set of digital scales. Generally King Arts figures are extremely well articulated. I'll show that in a moment but there are actually a couple of new articulation points related to this figure which is definitely different to how Hot Toys have done theirs. So let's check that out. As with all figures make sure you go through the instructions booklets. This one in particular because there are a few hidden compartments for the batteries to for the light up features. Also I'll show you how it looks with the roadie head sculpts on and I'll show you a couple of articulation points that are a little bit different. So on this one, on this Iron Patriot, the head you lift up very slightly and you get an extended pose if flight. Normally it goes to sort of this position a little bit higher but this you can extend it a little bit higher than that. So you've got a flying type of pose. Next thing is on the shoulder joints, this is different to Hot Toys, normally a barrel where the arm socket is housed comes out completely but not on this one. You pull it out slightly like so and the shoulder actually extends this part here. So there's no barrel, it just extends and you've got a really high range of motion there. You can sort of see very nice extension. The only little bit of concern is that because it's a small extension, hopefully that will hold up over time. But you can see it's very, it increases articulation tremendously because of that. The other thing is that I have put on here the forearm gauntlets. I feel it's a little bit too large for its scale. Some may like it but that's how it is on there. The next thing is extending the legs just like on other similar figures. You just literally pull it down and it extends to pretty high range of motion and these flaps give it a little bit more movement. There you go, like that. And you can see you can do the splits pretty easily. Sideways, front ways, backwards, etc. So lots of movement there. And the final thing I want to show you why that tool is useful, this particular tool. Hot Toys don't have many figures that have light up features on the feet. Only the mech test kits and I believe the Mark II Armour Unleashed. 
most, actually all of the King Arts ones have a light up feature on the feet. So here is the hidden compartment, nicely hidden. Battery goes in here, the lights will light up here. So when you do a flight pose, it will look like it is using the repulsors from the feet. So I'm gonna show you now how much this weighs after I put on the head sculpt of Rhodey. So this is the neck post, similar to the Mark IV or the Mark VII you get from Hot Toys. So you slide that in, then you put the Rhodey head on. There you go. Head sculpt is not bad. It's not perfect, but I think for this scale, remember it's a one in ninth scale. So size wise, the level of detail won't be as something as high as a one in six scale or even a quarter scale. But I think you can see that's Don Cheadle in the head sculpt there. I just want to show off this one particular feature that Hot Toys are starting to use. And King Arts have been doing it for a couple of their figures now. So this is a light up head. You think nothing particular of it. The helmet lights up. The face plates though, actually incorporate the head sculpts underneath. So if I take this off, you will see I had difficulty taking off the face plates. And this is where you use this tool. So I gently prize it in here, lift it up, and the face plate comes off, and you can see the roadie head sculpt underneath. So you can have an unhelmeted roadie head sculpt, a helmeted Tony roadie head sculpt, and also a completely fully helmeted Iron Patriot. And the light up feature completes the circuitry underneath here. So instantly when you put it on, the faceplate will light up. There's no switch you have to switch on specifically for that. The switch is built in here, and again, use this tool to prise that particular section out, and that's where the battery goes in. Now, as I said, these compartments are extremely small, and that is where you need to use this tool to put the battery in. As a quick tip, the longer prong this one goes towards the spring end and the flatter part of the battery is towards the longer end of the prong. So you slide it in, push it back, push the plunger down like this, that plunger, and that pushes the batteries into the compartments. So that should help with the fiddly aspects of putting in the batteries. Here is the Hot Toys Iron Patriots, we put this on the scales and we're looking at just under 900 grams or so. So now, putting the King Arts 1 in 9th scale die cast version on the scales, we're looking at just over 300 grams. Both are die cast, obviously considerably different scales. I'll show a quick comparison of them side by side so you can see how they look and the height wise Side by side you can see the height differences. If we look at the King Arts version on the left hand side, it stands at around nine and a half to nine and three quarter inches, whereas the Hot Toys version stands at around the sort of 12 inch mark. And I'm gonna get in a little bit closer here because you can see, hopefully on the camera, there's a very slight difference in the color shading and the tone of the blue, the royal bluey type look. It's, it's very subtle differences, but you can see it. Obviously the armors are very, very similar because the designs are similar, but there are differences throughout. You get a little bit more sort of weathering, a little bit of scuffs on the Hot Toys version. You can see on the shoulder pad there, a little bit on the chest plate. The King Arts version is much cleaner. And whichever scale suits you better. I think you'll be quite impressed with both versions. It's a nice representation of how he was in Iron Man 3. Some people love the film, some people hate it. Whatever works for you guys. The shoulder cannon on the King Arts version articulates to all the same points. Also that can move independently and has many places that 
you particularly want to put it in really. I like mine in the center, a little bit more symmetrical look. I know some people prefer it on one side of the shoulder, which you can do on both versions. So just showing off the back of them and how they compare. Again, very similar, slightly different, slightly in proportion wise, and some of the detailing, but as I said, two different companies making the same figure, they will obviously have some differences. They will never will be identical. So I'm gonna show you one last shot of how the King Arts version compares to the other figures from King Arts in their one in ninth scale die cast range. Here are all the King Arts one in ninth scale die cast versions available at the moment. And you can see that Iron Patriot fits in pretty much in scale with all the others. The tallest one here is Hammerhead and then Star Boost, followed by the other ones are pretty much around nine and a half inches in height. Really nice setup. I quite like how this is displayed, how I can put them together in a nice overall Iron Man 3 party protocol look. Obviously the Mark 43 at the back doesn't quite fit in with party protocol, but you can see how the others do, and I I feel this is a really nice overall display option that you can have these posed in. That's pretty much all I want to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and catch you all at the next video.